How's it going 3D printers? Andrew Sink here, and I recently got an Elegoo Mars resin printer and a Mercury wash and cure station, and I want to talk a little bit about my current workflow. This video is actually sponsored by Uncle Jesse. The two of us are working on a project right now that will be released in the near future, and he sent me this printer to do some experimenting on, so thanks! Unlike FDM 3D printing, resin 3D printing has a little bit of a workflow. The first thing you do is print the model, then you wash it, then you remove the supports, and then you bring it back into the curing chamber. I'm a big fan of the Mercury and Mars combo because it really simplifies this process. I'm using the Judge Dread Bust by Eastman because it has a lot of detail on it and it's a pretty good model to show off the capabilities of a resin 3D printer. I'm using the Chi2Box 1.81 software and I'm pretty much using all of the default settings just so I don't get too caught up in making little modifications. I've hollowed the model and I've added medium supports. The layers cure very quickly, between 6 and 8 seconds, but it's important to remember that because we're using a resin-based process, our layer height is much thinner, meaning there are more layers. These can add up pretty quickly. So for instance, this bust of Judge Dredd took about 9.5 hours and was composed of over 2100 layers. Visually, this style of printing is very interesting, with the model being lifted in and out of the liquid resin and growing over time. This isn't as present in the first few layers, but towards the end of the model, you can really start to see it pick up speed as it finishes printing. Once the model finishes, there are a few things you have to do before you can put it into the wash tank. The Mars 2 Pro comes with a small angled bracket that allows you to hold the build plate at an angle over the vat so it can drip dry and you can scrape off any excess resin. I'm using a metal scraper to remove the model from the build tray while wearing gloves, just to make sure I don't accidentally get any of the resin on my hands. Once the model's broken free of the build tray, I'm using the wire basket to place the model into in the Elegoo Mercury Plus. The Mercury Plus is a wash and cure station that makes this post-processing step really, really easy. To fill the container, I used 2 liters of 70% isopropyl alcohol due to the current shortage of 91% and above. Once the cover has been placed back on the Mercury Plus, we can select the amount of time we want to run our wash cycle for. I usually run the Mercury Plus for between 2 and 3 minutes. That seems to be so far the best results I've got from rinsing the part off. Any longer than that and I don't see an appreciable difference. Any less than that and the part still feels sticky when it comes out. After removing the part from the tank, I place it in a small container filled with warm tap water. This really serves two purposes, first to rinse off any isopropyl alcohol or resin that's still stuck to the part, and two to soften the supports so I can remove them a little bit easier. You have to be pretty delicate here, the part is still soft and uncured, so removing the supports a little bit too vigorously can lead to scars or pockmarks, so you want to go nice and slow and make sure you're removing the supports by pulling them directly away from the model. Once the supports have been removed and the resin's cured, you can take the container and place it outside, letting any uncured resin fully polymerize before discarding it. And that brings us to the final stage of the process, which is curing the part. The container in the Mercury Plus is swapped out with a turntable, which we can then select the cure setting on the machine, and it will slowly rotate the model while curing it. There's a little bit of a fine line to walk here. If you overcure your model, it'll become brittle, and if it's undercured, it'll be tacky. So this takes a little bit of trial and error to get it right. Here we can see the finished model. It looks really good, and we captured a lot of detail. You'll notice that things like the chain links and the text on the badge are all legible, and they all rendered fine. But there are a couple of marks here from when the support material was removed. You can see some of the small holes, like on the back of these elbow pads, where the support material left small craters when it was removed. Overall, resin printing is a really fascinating experience, and it's a lot of fun to experiment with, especially now that the machines are a little bit cheaper. Safety should really be a priority anytime you're using a resin printer. Make sure you work in a ventilated environment due to all of the alcohol and resin fumes, and make sure you're wearing gloves and eye protection so you don't splash any of the resin onto yourself. Be sure to check out Uncle Jesse's YouTube channel for more information about resin printing, and as always, thanks for watching, and have fun printing. 